Welcome to this tutorial on setting up an FTP server using FileZilla. In this video, I'll guide you through the steps to install and configure FileZilla server on Windows 10, Windows 11, and Windows Server. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully functional FTP server up and running. To get started, open a web browser, navigate to FileZilla Project's website, and download the FileZilla server. Once the download is finished, run the installer. In the server settings, you have the option to choose to start FileZilla server automatically or manually. Here, I'm going to choose to start it automatically. Next, you have to create a password for the administration interface. You will need this password to change the FTP server settings. There might be an option to configure the admin interface settings. We'll keep it set to manual startup. You can always access the interface using the start menu shortcut. The installation is finished. The next step is to set up the passive mode port range. To do this, Connect to the admin interface using the administration password you created during the installation. Then, go to the server menu and click Network Configuration Wizard. In the Network Configuration Wizard, make sure to select the option that says Use a custom port range or something similar, and then set the port range you want to use. Okay, we've configured the passive mode port range. Next, we need to open FTP port 21 and the passive mode port range in the Windows firewall. In the firewall, navigate to advanced settings and create a new inbound rule. In the rule wizard, when it asks for the rule type, choose port. Then for the specific ports, you'll need to enter two parts. First, enter port 21 for the standard FTP connection. Then you'll also need to specify the passive mode port range we configured earlier. All right, we're almost done. The last step is to configure FTP users for remote connections. To do this, open the administration interface, go to Server, and click Configure. Here you have two options. You can use your Windows user account or create FTP-only users. If you're going to use your Windows account, select System User and activate the User is Enabled checkbox. Don't forget to apply the changes once you're done. Now let's attempt to connect to the server from a different computer. All right, we've successfully connected to the FTP server from another computer using the Windows user account. However, it's important to remember that this method grants access to your entire Windows user profile. This might not be ideal for security reasons. For better security, it's highly recommended to create dedicated FTP users instead. This allows you to grant them specific permissions to access only the folders you want them to see on the server. To create a dedicated FTP user, go back to the server settings and under Users, click on the Add button. We will create a user called FTP User 1 and ensure that the user needs a password to log in. Next, we need to add at least one folder that the user can access. When adding a folder, you'll specify a virtual path and a native path. The virtual path is a user-friendly name that starts with a forward slash, 
and the native path is the actual location on your system. Here I'm going to create a folder called Data1 on the C drive. In the virtual path, we'll name it forward slash data1, and then we'll specify the actual location in the native path. And don't forget to click the Apply button to save the configuration. All right, now that we've created an FTP account, let's test if we can connect to the server remotely using this new account. During the installation, we configured the FTP server to start automatically. However, you can change this by going to Windows Services Settings. Locate the FileZilla server service and select the startup type you prefer. To start and stop the FTP server, you can use the Start menu shortcuts. Alternatively, you can use the net stop and net start commands from the command prompt or PowerShell to stop and start the FTP server. 